Okay, so this is the third tutorial in set four and in this tutorial we'll be looking at creating a fixture uh, using the Revit Family Editor. Now uh, for this exercise we won't be needing the usual uh, project interface. Uh, we'll keep it open because we will be placing our fixture within this project but for the fixture itself we will be creating it as an independent object. Um, as a family item which can be stored in a library um, and this family item you will need to submit separately to your project as well. So to create a family um, we need to go into new family. Um, now the first thing that opens is a whole heap of templates um, and these templates are crucial actually for your family uh, because it does set up certain conditions uh, for how it's actually placed in the project. Say for an example a door family uh, if you can actually see in the image comes with a host wall so that when it gets placed into a project Revit, Revit knows that it needs a wall to be inserted into. And some of the other ones uh, have other conditions uh, like lighting fixtures um, come with a host ceiling so that when you actually place that into a project it needs a ceiling to be placed into um, and of course profiles are just a shape uh, but that allows that shape to be um, swept and extruded as railings, as walls, as a whole host of things, mullions etc. So you've been experiencing that already now the template we'll use will be uh, the most flexible for us um, which will be just a generic model for the moment. So let's open that. Now this is what our family file looks like and you can see that the tools are different as well. So uh, the interface is slightly different. We're now in something called a family editor um, and you see everything else, the project browser, similar slight differences as well. Now what you see in front of you uh, would be two reference planes um, and these planes are just invisible planes um, which represent the centre uh, of uh, the space that you're in. Um, over in the project browser you'll see uh, a single plan view, uh, a ceiling view, a 3D view and of course all your elevations except they're called back, front, left and right rather than um, the usual east, west, etc. Um, now, to create a family, uh, you need uh, first to create the forms, okay? And it's a little bit similar to massing um, in that you use very similar tools. So, uh, if you remember back into massing, uh, you can use extrusion, blends, revolves, voids, and sweeps, sweep blends as well. Now you will need those tools to actually model your object. I'm just going to uh, do a very uh, simple, very crude object so you can see how these forms can actually be modeled um, and how you can actually make them parametric as well. So that's a little bit more complex but I'll just introduce to you very, very simple pa parameters so that it doesn't get too confusing. Okay, so extrusion you're very familiar with, so if you select the extrusion tools, obviously you can just draw your shape, okay, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Now over here in the properties palette, you'll see a start and end extrusion. What that means is it starts at zero on the, on the reference level, um, and it ends at 250 millimeters high. Okay, so if I change that to let's say a thousand, apply and finish this extrusion and go into a 3D view, you see that it's extruded this up to a meter high. And you can edit this at any time. So if I select that and go into edit extrusion and change this to let's say um, 600 and finish it. You can see now it's a lot shorter which is great. Let's model something else and I'm going to do a, a, a long 
rectangular piece but uh, not as thick this time represent the top of my bar I'm just going to make this a little bit higher first and I can do it directly here without editing the extrusion okay um, now if I were to create another extrusion to represent the top of the bar it will do exactly the same it will put a box right on that reference level on that ground and model it for me that's not I want or what I want I actually want it on top of this uh, box which I've already done um, so how do I actually do that the first thing you need to do is go into an elevation view so we've got a side-on view of this okay now I want to nominate this top plane to be where I want to put my next solid and you can only do that by putting in a reference plane converting it into a work plane and telling Revit to hop onto that plane um, so that you can model on top of it rather than down here and to do that it's a, it's a three step process but it's very simple just go into the home tab and click on the reference plane now I don't need to draw one because I've got the edge of that solid already so I'm just going to pick that edge and while I'm there drag it out Okay. So there's my reference plane and it's exactly on top of that that box now the next step is to convert it into a work plane so that I can actually work on top of it and that's easy to do you just need to select the reference plane go over into the properties palette and give it a name let's say top of bar you can give it whatever you like as long as it's named okay um, so now Revit would will register that as a possible work plane okay so that's the second step third step is to go into the plan view because that's where you want to create your extrusion now this uh, whatever I draw on this view it will be placed on the reference level which is the ground okay that's not what I want I want that level which is above that which is um, invisible to us but it is above that right on top of this box now to do that we need to go into the home and into the work plane we need to say change our work plane for us by clicking on the set work plane Revit will automatically pick up any uh, levels that can work um, as a work plane um, and put in the drop down list and you can see there is our reference plane press OK now nothing looks like it's changed but what has changed is the work plane so the work plane has, had actually, has actually lifted from the ground to the top of this box um, and I can do that I can see that by first just creating an extrusion and if I create an extrusion let's say on top of that and let's say my extrusion end is only thin this time 100 finish if I were to go into a 3D view now you can see that it's actually placed it on top okay so essentially what I did was create a reference plane on top change it into a work plane and then when I was in my plan view I asked Revit to change my work plane from here to here and so whatever I actually drew it placed it on top okay it's a very very simple bar of course you also be fancier now of course you have access to all of the other form tools that you experienced in the massing tutorials so you can create uh, revolutions, blends, sweeps so you can actually model something quite complex I'll leave you to do that because I've already introduced you to those tools um, void is just uh, the same process but it creates holes in things like what you can see in the picture there okay so I'm not going to go through that you already know that what I will introduce you to is uh, basic uh, parametric modeling um, parametric modeling is basically um, um, a, a type of modeling that allows you to adjust the form so if you remember back to when you placed the window in and within the window there are lots of different types different sizes um, and you can actually change uh, the sill height, some of the instance properties um, to adjust uh, its location. 
Well, basically what you were doing were changing some of the parameters of the family that you created. Now, I'm just going to delete this first and change my work plane back to the reference level. That's fine. I'm going to the reference level. Let me show you how you can make a object um, adjustable so that you can bring it into a project and the user can actually change some of the instant values or some of the type values and make the object change to suit their project. Now to create a parameter you need to remember two things. You need first a dimension and then convert that dimension into a parameter. So let's take this length of the bar for an example. I'm going to di dimension this by using the align dimension selecting that edge and that edge bring it up okay so now I've got a dimension and then all you need to do to convert it into a parameter is to select that dimension in the options bar go to something called label and add parameter I'm going to call this bar length now you can't have any spaces in the name okay Okay, now to test to see if this actually can change or not, you need to go into the um, Home tab, into the Properties panel, you'll see something called Family Types. You click on that, you'll see that my bar length parameter has already been listed. Okay, now if I click on the value in here and change it to a thousand, watch carefully as I press Apply. It changes the length for me. Okay. So now it's adjustable. Now I'm going to control this a little bit. I'm just going to move it over a little bit so that it adjusts from the center and I can do that by putting in another dimension from the side this time to the center reference line and then straight away to the edge bring it up and you'll see an EQ symbol as soon as you bring it up click on that and it'll make sure that this distance and this distance is always equal so that if I change the length of the bar it will force the behavior to go out there and there so it will move it from the center which is what I want okay so that's the bar length I'm just going to quickly do the same to the bar width so dimension select label add parameter bar width no spaces okay okay and I can actually change that now when I created that parameter, let's go into the family types and have a look. So I can change that to 300. Okay. Um, now when I created that parameter, let's choose bar length for example. I'm going to modify this parameter so I can see what I did in the first place. Look over to your right hand side, you'll see something called type and instance and this will give you a clue onto how Revit deals with type and instant properties so when you in your project how you have the instant properties and the type properties this is how Revit actually defines them in the first place so if I made the bar length something I can change on the fly um, that will only affect the, that instance of that family then I can change it to an instance property press OK apply OK. Now if I were to insert this bar into a project I'll be able to change the length of that bar as an instance property um, but the bar width would be a type property. Now if I select it on the family type you can see that if I were to modify that you can see that it's a type property. Let's load this into a project and see what happens. So um, let's click on the load into project, which you can also see in the home tab. 
and what it'll do is it'll instantly load it into any project that's open. Um, make sure you also save it as a separate family file. I'm just going to put it out here so you can see. Okay, so here's my uh, uh, bar. It's just called Family One for the moment. Okay, um, and it's just a box for the moment. Okay, but if you select on it and move over into the instant properties, you'll be able to see that parameter I put in bar length. Okay, and I can actually change it from here. Okay. Now, what if I now I can actually access that in the components because it's a component. What if I put lots and lots of these in? So I've got three bars there. Now I can change the bar length of each one of them. And because they're an instance property, they will change it just for that particular instance. Whoops. Okay. So that's how instance properties work, um, and that was my instance parameter. Now, my bar width, because it was a type parameter, can only be accessed through the edit type type properties. Okay, so I'll move that over. Oops, and that's a floor plan, so make sure that I select the family first, edit type, and the, there are my type properties. And you can see here's bar width. Um, it's 300, it's a type property, so what happens if I change it to 600, it will change it for every single type. Okay. Now if you apply that to all the uh, windows and doors you've been creating or inserting into your project, then now you can actually understand the difference between an instance property or a parameter and a type a type property um, and if you were to go back into the family editor and I can edit that family anytime um, you can now understand how that's derived as well so an instance property is actually an instance parameter that has been uh, almost programmed into this form in the same way that we did it by putting a dimension and then changing it into a parameter so as you're uh, designing and modeling your uh, custom fixture, you might want to think about putting some uh, basic parameters in, which would allow the user to be able to use it in different projects in different spaces. Now this family, when you've actually finished creating it, has to be saved as a separate family file, and you'll see it's an RFA file, um, and I'm just going to call this bar. Um, and you'd need to submit that with your project as well. Now if you've forgotten how to use some of the solid tools, um, some of the blends and revolutions, uh, if you want to create some uh, complex geometry, go back into the massing tutorials um, because they're identical tools um, and the process is identical as well. Keep in mind also the uh, reference planes and the reference lines. Um, which you can use to help you model um, and also the work planes so um, you can switch name reference planes and then switch to those reference planes as work planes uh, to help you model on different planes. Uh, and that's it on Family Editor. It's a very basic introduction to the Family Editor. Of course families can get quite complex and so can parametric modeling. Um, all you're expected to do is to model a fixture for your bar design, um, save that as a separate RFA file, submit that with your project, but also insert it into your project so that we can see that fixture inside your design.